<laughs> so uh, we're gonna be making some videos today because that's what we do on the YouTube channel um, I'm gonna be working on some little stuff so God I got my mess cleaned up from the last video that I had waiting on some parts for this thing so we're gonna kind of just push that off to the side and I'm gonna work on some little stuff that I got uh, going on on the car so said we were gonna be doing little things what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be welding some bullhorns on for the for the exhaust. I would like to do uh, my four port. I got a four port max solenoid, so I'm going to do the four port for the boost control. We do the vacuum lines. I want to put uh, the passenger seat in. That's not really that important, um, but I want to put a passenger seat in because I got the belts now and start to clean up the wiring. So I don't think I'm going to get to the wiring today or possibly in this video but I want to work on the bullhorns and the wastegate dumps. So the reason for that, if you guys remember my last track video, I had some problems with the timing system or what I thought was a timing system. wrong with that that wasn't no 11 <laughs> so the theory now talking to Brooks from DIY garage Texas channel he sent me a message after watching the video and he was like hey dude I have worked on a couple cars that have had issues with the exhaust messing or interfering with the timing system so it kind of a light bulb went off so I have like a straight exhaust dump on comes right out the bumper and uh, so I'm, that's why I'm going to put the little bull horns on but my wastegate dumps are firing down like straight at the ground right by the where the tire is so the first day I went to the track I was leaving on like four pounds so the wastegates were never opening while I was staging but now on the the last day I was there I'm staging and I'm leaving on like eight to 10 pounds. So the waste kits are opening and possibly like firing down right where the timing system is. So I'm gonna be redoing where my waste gate lines, waste gate dumps are firing and doing a little uh, a kick up with some bullhorns just to eliminate that. It's an easy fix. And if it eliminates it, perfect. Because I don't wanna act like run a nine five and it shows me an 11 five anymore. So that's kind of annoying. Let's get started. Alright, so got the new harness all laid out. This one is a December 2022 expiration. The one I have in there now, I bought it a while ago, so that one's 2021. So I might switch them later, or I'll get a little bit more use out of this one, I guess. So I am going to install this thing with the seat that I have. So I did put the bracket on the bottom of the seat. That's all done. Passenger side I didn't have to modify, which was nice because the driver's side with the same bracket I actually had to like cut a little section out of it. This one is just going to bolt right in. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take the, the lap belts and the crotch belt. Now, I'm going to bolt those in first before I put the seat in just so I don't have to work around trying to bolt this thing in with the seat in place. So it'll be a lot easier. Let's do that. They see me scroll and they hate it. They don't like me because my hands are dirty. <laughs> okay, so I figured out that this uh, bracket fits really well, and I don't have to cut it when it's on the wrong way, when it's backwards. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it because I figured that out, and I'm going to, you know, just cut this stuff off of here. So I figured it out after a few different uh, trial runs. Uh, with the bracket on backwards, it fits but the seat didn't fit, so when I flipped it around, the seat fit, but then the bracket doesn't bolt down. So, we're gonna change. I uh, said to my eight-year-old, I said, 
in a goofy voice, how do you think we're going to fix this problem? And what did you say? I said, let's try using the plasma cutter. You said, let's try using the plasma cutter. Oh, I bought a plasma cutter like a couple months ago or a month or whatever. I was going to use the angle grinder and I've never used the plasma cutter. And I was like, how do you think we're going to fix this? Trying to be all clever and I was going to pull a grinder out and he's like, use the plasma cutter. So kids are smarter than me for sure. So we're going to try to hook the plasma cutter up and get this thing ripping. Never used it. I don't know if I have all the fittings, so we're going to go that road. All right, so here's where we're at. We got the bull horns, both sides, welded on, that are pushed up against the truck here on the dollies. So I did also add the, the foreport. You can kind of hardly see it in there, but did add the foreport. So there's the vacuum line coming from here, and then one going to the top, one going to the bottom. And now let's go back over into the, into the car. We got the seat in. Seat is in, and the belts are all in. And what I also did was put the Terminator X handheld up on the, the top bar there. So I did leave enough slack here so I can actually push it up and then still get the SD out, and I can pull this out if I want to. Um, yeah, so all, all I did was I basically took uh, a, a flathead screwdriver and got it hot with a torch and made two little holes in there and then wrapped a, a uh, hose clamp around it. So wrapped it around the tube. Now this can come in and out pretty easily. You can pop it up, pop the SD card out if I need to, push it back in, pop it down. All good. Okay, so something I wasn't even really expecting to do, I decided I was going to do. So I ended up changing the line lock. So there was kind of some discussion in the comments on the video when I installed that was lock out the rear or lock out the front. When it came on the car, it was already locked out on the front, so I left it how it was. And after the day at the track, I don't really think I liked it. Like I do want to have the, the adjustability with the foot. I want to be able to modulate the pedal for the front brakes with the rear unlocked. So what I did was I mo removed the line lock from this side, rerouted it over to that side, because that was the easiest way for me to do it and I didn't have to change any of the lines. So this one did have a little coupler in it, like a union or whatever you wanna call it, but I bent the lines out and I was able to get it to come over here and it's securely mounted and wired in and I did test it and it does work. I'll insert a picture, it was over there and it was just kind of floating there and it was just junk. It wasn't like mounted to anything, but it still worked. So I kind of took uh, the opportunity to get it working. So it locks out the rear. So now what I can do is turn the line lock on, push the brakes. It doesn't stop the rear tires, lets them spin free, but I can modulate the front brakes. So that thing's mounted over here, secured to the to the tower and that was really the only modification I had to make. I was able to reuse all the other lines so this one was actually uh, connected to the line lock itself so I repurposed this just kind of bent it over and down so really cleaned it up a lot took a lot of junk out of that area and I think it, it's better and I'm gonna like it better so yeah and with these bullhorns I caught my leg on it twice today place so haven't hit my leg on a trailer hitch in like 10 years but you put those things on and I caught it twice in like the last hour that I was out here you know because I'm fat and it's like a little bit of a gap there so that's it for this one
Thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys like all of the little things that we're doing. Uh, and yeah, next thing for this is alignment and I'm gonna go drive it. And I wanna get my mom over to do like a trans brake launch on the street <laughs> now that the passenger seat's in. Talk to her about it today. We're, we're working out the details.